All right, so this video we'll look at hypothesis testing, uh, and this will be a two-tailed, and sigma is unknown. All right, so uh, let's take a look at this. We have the claim about mu, uh, the population mean. That's our null hypothesis. H naught is mu equals some number k. Uh, and for the alternate hypothesis, it's a two-tailed. That means we believe that mu is different than the value stated in H naught. It could be less than or greater than. We're not saying one or the other. We're just saying it's different than what they're stating here in the null. So our alternate hypothesis, H sub 1, would be mu is not equal to k. And when we are <coughs> uh, doing hypothesis testing, and sigma is unknown. See, we will not we will not know the population standard deviation. So when sigma sigma is unknown, our test statistic is a t value. Uh, we'll use the student's t distribution to look it up. And so the test statistic is equal to uh, t is equal to x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of n and the degrees of freedom is n minus 1. And x bar is the mean of a simple random sample. Mu is the value stated in H naught. S is the sample standard deviation. That's what we'll have. We won't have the population standard deviation. And n is equal to the sample size. If we knew sigma, then when we found our test statistic, that would be a z-score. And I have videos on that. You can check those out if you need to. Uh, so how do we conclude a test using the p-value and level of significance alpha? Well, if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis and say the data are statistically significant at the level alpha. And if the p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so let's take a look at our example. It says there's a certain type of avalanche in Canada and the U.S. that has an average thickness of mu equals 67 centimeters. A ski patrol team is studying these avalanches. A random sample of avalanches in a certain region gave the following thickness in centimeters. And these are the thicknesses. <clears throat> this is the sample that the uh, ski patrol team took. All right, so assume the thickness has an approximately normal distribution. Use a 1% significance level to test the claim that the mean thickness in this certain region is different from that in Canada. Okay, so we're using a 1% significance level. This 1%, that's our alpha. Uh, in other words, alpha in this case would be 0 0.01. We convert the, des the percentage to a decimal. All right, so first we need to state the null and alternate hypothesis. So for the null hypothesis, that's H naught, we're make, they're making the claim that the mean, the population mean thickness is 67 centimeters. So that's mu is 67. And then the alternate hypothesis, we, we want to test the claim that the mean thickness in, in this region, in this certain region, is different from that in Canada. So we're just saying that mu is not equal to 67. We're saying it's different. We're not saying it's less than 67. We're not saying it's greater than 67. We're just saying it's different. All right. <clears throat> so what we need to do now is find our test statistic. So that's going to be T. I'm going to do that in a different color. So T is equal to x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of n. All right, so we need x bar. Well, if you notice in the problem, they don't give us x bar. Well, we have to use this data here and actually calculate it. 
So we have to add all these values up and then divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, by 16. There are 16 data values. So we have to add all these up and divide by 16. And I'm not going to show that work. You, you should know how to find the mean by now. So when I do that, add them all up, divide by 16, I get the sample mean is 61.8. Sixty-one point eight. <clears throat> All right. So now I need the sample standard standard deviation. I need S. And once again, you'll have to use these data values to calculate it. You'll have to go back to your standard deviation formula and calculate the standard deviation. And so S. <clears throat> once we do that, that's ten point. 6. Okay, you should know how to calculate both of these if you're this far into the statistics class. Okay, because you, you've done these before. All right, now, well, well, we know n is 16, and then let's see, mu. Well, we know mu, they give us that, that's 67. And then our degrees of freedom is 16 minus 1 which is 15. <clears throat> so let's calculate T. So T is equal to X bar minus mu which is 67 over S which is 10.6 divided by the square root of N. And after we punch this into our calculator, we get negative 1.962, okay? This is our test statistic, okay? So we need to look this up. We need to find our p-value, okay? So our p-value, okay? So we'll go to the student's t-distribution table. So let's pull that up, <clears throat> and here we go. All right, so our t is negative 1.9622, and if you remember, our degrees of freedom is 15, okay? So here's the column for your degrees of freedom. See the df? So I go down here to 15. So this, this is the row that I'm looking at, that row there. And I need to find, now notice we got a negative 1.9622 and all these values are positive. Well, you just look for the positive value. Okay, if you get a negative, you look for the positive. All right, so let's see, 1.9622. Okay, and you notice that it's not on there. But what we do see is that 1.9622, that is between these two values here, the 1.753 and 2.131. So we're right in here, okay? See, for 1.5, I'm sorry, for 1.753, now remember, this is a two tail. So we are looking at this line right here. Okay? We need the two tail, not the one tail. We need the two tail. So if you can see here that for 1.753 for the two tail, that is 0.1. And then if we look at the 2.131 for the two tail, that's 0 0.05. So the neg the 1.9622, that would be, let me erase this, that would be between these two values. It's in here somewhere, okay? Between 0 0.05 and 0 0.1. So we know that our p 
p-value, let's see, and let me not put equals here. Let's put that our p-value must be between 0 0.05 and 0.1. Okay. All right. Now, our alpha, whoop, should be a less than there. All right, so our alpha, we're using a 1% significance level. So our alpha is equal to 0 0.01. And if you notice our p-value, well, it's between this number and this number. Well, all the numbers between 0 0.05 and 0 0.1 is greater than 0 0.01. So we can say that our p-value is greater than 0 0.01. I mean, we don't know ex our exact p-value, but we know it's between these two. And this number here is larger than the 0 0.01. And this number here is larger than the 0 0.01. So we know our p-value is going to be larger than the 0 0.01. Okay. All right, so since our p-value is larger than alpha, okay, than our 0 0.01, our significance level, we fail to reject h naught. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. So what this means is at the 1% level of significance, the sample evidence does not support a claim that the average thickness of the avalanche in that certain region in Colorado is different from that in Canada. Okay, we can't reject the null. All right, because that's what we were testing. We were testing to see if the thickness was different than what was stated, and we can't because we we fail to reject. Our p-value was greater than alpha. All right, so <clears throat> I hope this video helped. Uh, I have other videos on the hypothesis testing. I have where sigma's known, sigma's unknown, and I will be doing them for the proportion. And I'm doing the left tail, right tail, and the two tail for each one of them. And I'll do them in separate videos. As you can see, the videos run kind of long. All right, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.